Able to On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont. Hello and welcome to this edition of Able Dead On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. We would like to thank our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and Champlain Community Services. With us to discuss the importance of um, growing up and helping a relative with Alzheimer's is Dr. Brett Campbell. Um, I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. And let's get ready to um, ask questions. And um, thank you for joining us on Able Then On Air. Thanks for having me. And um, so we're talking to Alzheimer's today. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about, well, long and short of it, what is the definition of Alzheimer's disease and how your family dealt with it. Okay, well, there. first of all, with the doctor, that's, that's a PhD in, in PhD. a totally different field, of, so I'm not any sort of medical expert on Alzheimer's. My experience with it is having been the caretaker, the primary caretaker, caregiver for my mother for the last year and a half of her life while I was watching her uh, succumb to the disease. So um, to define it, Again, I'm not any sort of medical medical per expert, but uh, it's eat, it's it's a disease that's eating away at your brain. Uh, How so? Well, it's um, <clears throat> you can. Someone showed me one time three scans of brains, right? and uh, it was color, and the red areas show the active areas in the in the brain, <clears throat> and with a child, you had almost kind of a Swiss cheese thing going on, different, different areas of the brain active. Mm -hmm. as, you, as, they, as we grow into adulthood, mm -hmm. those red areas expand. Mm -hmm. Well, with cerebral palsy, for example, I have cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. that it, it deals with the cerebellum of your brain, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. part, okay, mm -hmm. and nerve endings and neurological stuff. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, just to finish the, uh, the three brains that I saw, the uh, third image was the brain of someone suffering Alzheimer's. And it was very much like the child's brain of the small, the only difference being those are just one, two, uh, those are gonna get smaller. And as, that was when I realized, when I saw that, that um, my mother had always been very immaculate in terms of taking care of the house and such, and now she was leaving a lot of crumbs behind, and we had an ant, fist, ant infestation. Oh, really? <laughs> and um, I would try to talk with her about, Mom, you gotta remember to put, and when I saw those, uh, those scans, it made me realize she's all done learning. She's all done learning and, and changing behaviors. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had to just learn that I had to be, work a little harder and uh, be more accepting of her l limitations. And it's funny how life cycles are bookends because in this case, the child was becoming the parent to the parent, you know, switch so roles. So the parent was regressing back to a child. Yes. Very much so. Okay. Um, when you say that, what exactly does that mean? Well, <clears throat> I don't know f for certain, but I would estimate that my mother's uh, level of uh, cognition and cerebral activity was on a par perhaps with like a, a, a five-year-old. A oh, five-year-old. Uh-huh. Um, You'll so, often, yeah, so he, so she would call you, m mommy or daddy or no, no, nothing like that, nothing like that. She still was aware that I'm, I was her son, but for example, when her sisters, my aunts, came over to visit 
one time, and we've known them for years. And my mother was taking them around to different rooms, almost like a, a kid would give you a tour of the parents' home, saying, this is, this is Brett's room, and this is my room. When she was in the, uh, the last month of her life between um, going back and forth between Roe and what was then Roe and Court Nursing Home and the ICU at CVMC. Um, oh, she was, in a, she was in the ICU of CVMC. I had, yeah. she fell while she was not in my care mm -hmm. um, and broke her hip. And that complicated things and brought them, she died about a, within a month or so the accompanying pneumonia and, and these sorts of things. And when I got the call from the hospital that where she was staying, um, basically she was in a uh, assisted living facility for a two week stay. While I was checked into Brattleboro Retreat for a few days for the exhaustion and the depression of watching her losing her mind for a year and a half. Things like waking me up at three o'clock in the morning, telling me I had to drive her to work at a local business here that she'd never worked at. And uh, so she thought that she was still working. She thought she was an employee there. She had a friend, she worked at stores right next to it. Mm -hmm. And she had a friend that worked at this particular store. But, uh, and I had to try to convince her it was three in the morning by having her look out the window and see how dark it was outside. But sometimes, I mean, she she would have difficulty remembering what day it was. Would she think, would, okay, so it's Alzheimer's to a point, there's a person with Alzheimer's, um, yeah. are they mentally, are they considered mentally incompetent? Oh, I would think most certainly. Um, yeah. Uh, I was, with my mother falling and breaking her hip, by the way, I I, um, I googled. They said I always heard the term "the beginning of the end," mm -hmm. and uh, then I later heard medical staff people call it the old person's best friend. Mm -hmm. But yes, definitely. In in fact, part of um, part of what I was dealing with sometimes, I hate to say, mm -hmm. was. Um, keeping her protected against phone call scammers mm -hmm. that want to... Uh, what exactly is that for an elderly person who doesn't... Well, it's, there's one that was a national publication that I won't name that uh, I had otherwise previously respected, but they s did the old scam of... Uh, send you a, f a free book and if it's yours if you like it you can pay twenty dollars and keep it or otherwise you can return it and i only found out about it later when they called or sent another and i was like we'll send it back to you you know it's a just other um there are people out there that prey on the elderly and like let's you know in the in earlier days, the, the blanket term for whether you might have had Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or some other dementia coming on, they would call it going senile. Mm -hmm. And um, there are people who will take advantage of the folks that aren't in charge as much anymore of their mental faculties. Mm -hmm. Life is bookended, you know? We, uh, we come in helpless. Uh, going back to being a child, Going back to being a child, yeah. uh, um, so she was regressing. Well, I'm taking care of her as a middle-aged adult. She didn't start, she wasn't diagnosed mm -hmm. with the disease until she was 83. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was back in 2013, mm -hmm. uh, the year that she passed. And backing up for, to remember a, a little bit, it's been a while since I was reading and researching about Alzheimer's while mm -hmm. I was taking care of her, but apparently it's a matter uh, largely of neurons, plaques mm -hmm. and tangles, they call them. They can get dis disconnected, and if some of them snap in a certain way, they will tangle up. So you're getting all kinds of misinformation. The human brain is much more complex than people can understand. And so does because the, the brain, here's the thing, the brain acts as a computer. And a computer with feelings. A computer with feelings. So if 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 the if the 
person is tired, mm -hmm. right? Overworked, mm -hmm. tired, you're gonna get sick, mm -hmm. yeah. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, because going going to Alzheimer's and, and, and you know and retirement per se. Some people think, oh, I must work seven days a week, you know, to make ends meet. You know, I don't, I, I shouldn't take a break. But in actuality, people need to take a break because then otherwise you're gonna turn around and get sick mm -hmm. yes. and end up to the point where, can you comment on stuff like that? Like opinions? Well, certainly, I mean, that's one of the things I mean to advocate for the most is that- What did we, your mother do for work, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, I think before I was born, she was doing administrative assistant or what they called secretarial work mm. back then, and mm. then, the era that I was born, it was quite qu common for the men and the fathers to go to their work, and many of the mothers were at home, mm -hmm. do, taking care of the home, and doing a lot more, uh, spending a lot more time with the children, raising them. She returned to the workforce to uh, part time in various retail stores after my father passed away when I was 18, and I think that she did it. Um, the extra income, I'm sure, certainly helped. I think it was just sort of a social outlet for her that mm -hmm. way too. And um, so, uh, one of the uh, one of the things I want to advocate for again is that. Um, they leave so many people. If I hadn't been there for her, mm -hmm. and I'm the middle of three sons, I'm just the one that ended up being single my whole life, and the one who, when my father did pass, she relied on me, I think, the most out of the three. My younger brother was too uh, young, and my older brother was dealing with some issues, and um, so it fell to me. And then uh, as she got sicker, I left a place I had in Northfield to move in with her to, to take care of her. And uh, when I first moved in, she was still uh, lucid enough that we could watch Jeopardy together mm -hmm. talk. We could, uh, you know, carry on adult conversation. It was when she had this apparently mini stroke, mm -hmm. her small stroke in March of 2013 wow. that I read the same thing from a, a woman professional writer who wrote an article. My mother was getting a magazine, the AARP yeah. magazine, American Association of Retired Persons, yeah, I yeah, believe. Yeah. And there was a woman who wrote an article and it was the exact same thing. Mm. Of her mother had a stroke wow. and this kind of triggered a chain reaction started. Well, you to gotta show. think also, as far as medicine concerned, let's take history for example. When people had strokes way back, 1800s, 1900s, or Alzheimer's or brain injuries or problems, doctors were first, they were first coming up with antidotes um, to this. With Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other things related to it, um, Alzheimer's is really no cure for it, is there? Um, I have not read in or studied in mm -hmm. as much detail since my mom passed, and I, as somebody who would like to... Was she, was she losing her memory? Oh, absolutely, wow. absolutely. Remembering... Um, Dates, uh, places, and all that. The, the long-term memory is much more intact. Did, did she forget who you were? That's an excellent question, and one of the things I was going to allude to before was I was very lucky. I never, I never faced the day of going to visit her in some facility or other, and her asking me the heartbreaking question of who are you. She, uh, I think, on a couple of, a vi of visits there. Yeah. between the hospital and Rowan Court. I think at first she may have mistaken me as just another staff person there. I mean, I was visiting her one time at, at, in the ICU at the hospital, mm -hmm. and I told her, you're in the ICU in the hospital, and she, she's like, I am? Just no 
you know, um, is it is it, uh, it it is it's physiological deterioration yeah. of the mind itself. So uh, yes, what exactly is that? Well, once again, <laughs> I think um, your neurotransmitters, brain cells. There's I can't last I read two hundred billion or so, wow. and you mentioned before the brain is a computer, like a computer. And because uh, you had me on an earlier segment when I discussed some of my own uh, mental challenges, and you said before about, yeah, I, I'm only recently learning how fatiguing they can be. There was, um, was it on one of your earlier shows that yeah, a person said? Yeah, it can said, make you tired from, yeah, from the... Um, lie down for, yeah. The, uh, the channels are shut off, and they, yeah, the brain exactly. has to go other, because take we, other um, routes. The, it, uh, uh, the Vermont Center for for Indo for elderly and independent living, yeah, they uh, for elderly services, came on and um, spoke about Alzheimer's and mm -hmm. um, yeah, heart yeah. attacks and strokes. Yeah, um, but yeah, as person becomes tired. Yeah, as for a cure, I don't know. I've heard some rumors along the way. I've heard some thing. You know. I haven't seen, the one fact that I can recall when I was doing some research, and so this is six years ago now, um, was that right now the estimate is that one out of eight people over the age of 65 will get Alzheimer's. So one out of eight, that puts it at 12 and a half percent. By mid-century, they're estimating that um, that the uh, that it'll be one in four, doubled, up to twenty five percent. People are living longer, right? Mm. And uh, we're, these bodies of ours are built to last only a certain amount of time. Um, so yeah, the, the the mind deteriorates. They become like children again. Somebody has to take care of them. I had I was lucky. I had some really. Nice assistance from the, the folks at Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice, and also some, some wonderful assistance from the folks at uh, the Council on Aging oh, yeah. over in Barrie. Yeah. And thank goodness for Project Hope, because that was a place where mm. the scant work that I could do, I had to, I was so busy scant taking work? care of her, the, the, the scant work. I was like substitute teaching here and there. At one point, when she first uh, was diagnosed with it, and I was taking care of her and didn't really have much steady work at the time, I went through what for me is a fiasco of trying to learn how to be a uh, life insurance salesman. I got, uh, got suckered in with, I'm sorry, that's not speaking well of the <laughs> life insurance industry, but um, not the line of work for me. I'm a teacher, not a salesperson. and. Um, but so you take a financial hit, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of at the end of taking care of her, I was financially, emotionally, spiritually destitute. There was a time that I was living uh, essentially out of her car. I was teaching writing classes at Norwich in the morning uh, as an adjunct professor, and there were times that I was parked in my car in a Norwich parking lot because I had no other place to go and uh, setting an alarm to wake up on time to go teach my eight o'clock class. So um, one of the things I want to advocate for So you is were a professor at Norwich? Part-time, a while back, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and uh, this means that folks can't work as much and we don't have, uh, we're heading towards a, a, an epidemic or a pandemic of it anyway. 25% of the population now. We're living longer and our diet is different. My mom had a sweet tooth. Unfortunately, I have too much of one also. Yeah. My father did it. He died when I was 18. I could only imagine what it would be like if he had lived along with her and gotten Alzheimer's too. But they're also from the generation that's the first to have uh, refined sugar and, <laughs> and uh, white bread with very little nutrition to it and such. And, and uh, in one article that I read, I think in a Discover magazine shortly after my mother passed, some medical professionals were calling uh, Alzheimer's diabetes type three. 
So I can only imagine it's like saturation of, of sweets and such through the, through the brain. We have to pay attention to, I have to pay attention certainly to what my diet is. And um, my mother was a crossword puzzle person mm -hmm. up until this the Alzheimer's, last Alzheimer's, this, here's the thing. Yeah. <clears throat> this Alzheimer's, okay, she had it. Mm -hmm. Will you get it? Is I it, have no idea. <laughs> is it trickled? No, I'm asking a question. Is it trickled to the family members or I the don't family know. chain? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know whether it's genetic that way. I think it's possible that it could be genetic, certainly, and uh, bio-environmental as well. And will I get it? Gosh, I hope not. Um, at one point, I, I asked a counselor I was going to, if I, I'm in student loan debt for my doctorate and such, and I was saying to him, well, if I get Alzheimer's, do you think he'll excuse me from having to pay the balance on my student loan? And he said, I don't know, but I don't think you'll care. I wouldn't know what was going on at that point anyway. Um, so will I get it? I hope not. Is there a chance that I could get it? Most definitely. Most definitely. It, it usually sets on in earlier years, but I have met people who that have had parents or loved ones who have gotten started developing developing it in their fifties or sixties. You know, um, the uh, all I can tell you from firsthand experience is the heartbreak. How so? Seen. You loved your you love your mother, right? Yes. Um, I mean, my mother's deceased, but yes. Yes. I okay. still do. Of course, you still do. Could you imagine staying with her and watching her losing her mind a little bit more each day? Could you imagine coming home from doing substitute teaching at the school and my mother, because my aunts had come and visited and told her about an upcoming high school reunion for her in Hardwick in June. I think this was April at the time, but she was convinced that, um, that she had to be taken to Montpelier High School this Monday evening mm -hmm. because she had a high school reunion. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, she has this idea in her head because her aunts introduced her to it. I think they even gave her a little printed piece of literature about it. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point, the only way I could convince her that that reunion was not happening that afternoon was to call her sister that, and put her on the phone with my mother. And my mother's like, well, I guess I'm wrong. Does yeah. it affect family in different ways? Sure. In other words, you feel one way, your sisters might feel another way. I have no sisters. I have, that's okay. It would have helped me understand women a lot more, be, a lot better, I suppose, if I had. But, um, and I don't mean that derogatory, I just mean that as one of my own shortcomings. Um, the, uh, yes, it affects the entire family. It's like alcoholism or an addiction that way. Um, it's, uh, you cannot love someone like that and not be affected. I went into such a deep depression afterwards, and I have, uh, I have what's considered caregiver PTSD. You don't Which get PTSD. Care, caregiver post-traumatic stress disorder, because you're in a battle. Usually we talk about this, this, the, our, the military personnel coming and having post-traumatic stress disorder. They're not the only ones that stuff. If you suffer a significant enough trauma, you will very likely have a post-traumatic stress disorder. So that could be- my wife, Well, I mean, my wife has PTSD due to World Trade. To, uh, to I'm sorry, to- To World Trade Center. Oh, that's right, she was there. Yeah. On so, September 11th, so yes. You, you're suffering PTSD from taking care of your family members? I'm trying to understand this. Well, let's go back to your mom, okay? You loved your mom. Yeah. You still do. Yeah. How would you like to be living with her and taking care of her? And it would be very hard. Her? Yeah. Because then we wouldn't have a life. You wouldn't have a life and you'd be getting eaten inside. You know, this is, at one, you know. It, it, it's, now, I loved my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. He passed away, mm -hmm. but it was very hard 
for us as a couple to see him whittle away. Mm -hmm. You see. Mm -hmm. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, so that's the. Th I mean, one time I was in a very long conversation with a woman who was uh, a psychologist. I can't remember. She might have been coming to talk with my mom via. Washington County, she may have been connected with home health and hospice, I don't quite remember. Um, she may have been with Council on Aging. But um, I had a long conversation and she said, you're in a battle zone. When I was checked into Brattleboro Retreat, I slept almost solidly for 24 hours. I did not realize till I got down there that I had been running on adrenaline fumes for several months. I just I had to keep, keep, keep There's going. There's a song back in the 70s. Um, I forget who, I have to look it up. It's called Running on Empty. Jackson Brown. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes people live for that song because you can't just run on fumes, you know? It's like a human computer. You have to eat, you have to drink, mm -hmm. uh, stay hydrated appropriately. You have to get enough sleep some people, talk about Alzheimer's for a minute, but some, like, marathoners, mm -hmm. okay? They're married to, oh, I must get that gold medal. I must get this, I must get that, I must try harder. You know, boxers do the same thing. But some of the Alzheimer's is still back in, you know, olden times thinking Oh, I have to go to work, I have to do this, I have to do that. When will they stop and say, uh, um, okay, now it's time for rest, you know? Could you so, clarify for me who they are? People in a general. The, okay, and... People, what I mean by people in general, mm -hmm. when I said, I said, I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna repeat it. Okay. That when people say, oh, I have, like, we. You said with your mother, she thought she was going to work. Mm -hmm. And you were taking her. So they're regressing back yeah. to when they, right? But there needs to be more services. Absolutely, that's why I'm For here. Alzheimer's. Yes, that's, that's largely what I'm talking about, yeah, Larry. Go ahead. Is, um, I'm we, sorry. I'm just thinking. Go ahead. Don't, don't apologize. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's some, I'm glad that you are because this is something we need to do a lot more thinking about because it's, uh, again, it's... What going. happens to the elderly person? Like, for numerous times, I've, uh, numerous, for numerous years, back in New York, I did shows on what if a person's family member dies, a, 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 a parent, where does that leave the child? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, how does the child get taken care of? through the state? Does, does the child get taken through the state because there's nobody to take mm -hmm. care of the child? Mm -hmm. So where does that leave you when you don't have help? That's okay. I think I, this is something I've thought about, if this is answering your question. I think it is. Go ahead. Okay. I was available for my mom. Just, this, you know, out of the three sons, but I was the one. you can't do everything right yourself but here's what here's why I'm going with it um, both my brothers have been married have offspring have kids um, so for someone like me who's never married doesn't have any kids if I get Alzheimer's like you asked earlier what becomes of me we're leaving it we're leaving it to home care we need facilities built people need jobs we need facilities built. There should be, should be more professional, more compassionate professional <laughs> service. When my mother was, <coughs> excuse me, when my, when my mother was um, in the ICU. Excuse me for the so It's like PTSD. If you were in, okay, let's say my wife was in the Army, Navy, Air Force. I don't think she can be all three at the same time. I'm just saying. Okay. Let's say. She was in the armed forces. Yeah. You know what shell shock is? Mm-hmm. It's the older term for PTSD. Okay. Yeah. From so, like World War One or two. Okay. Yeah. Alzheimer's, I'm assuming, 
is similar. I'm not saying it is, but it might be coined as similar to shell shock. What I mean by that is that forgetfulness, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you're forgetting, um, I'll give you an example about my mother. Um, before my, mo my mother died, I had an opportunity to see her a couple months prior, mm -hmm. okay? Um, blank stare. She didn't know who I was. My grandfather, same thing. That shell shock, if you will. Mm -hmm. Just forgetting, like, mm -hmm. forget, like, you know, a blank stare. Mm -hmm. Nothingness. Well, okay. It, That's what I meant by shell shock. If you get shell shock, when you get hit like that, uh, shot or something like that, and you're having PTSD, and, and but you're letting that taking over your mind. Well, in this case, I think that one of the differences between Alzheimer's and PT, PTSD would be that um, I said it was similar in, a, in certain right. circumstances. Alzheimer's would be actually a physiological physiologically degenerative disease mm -hmm. of the mind and the central nervous system. Now, somebody who has a trauma of mm -hmm. some type, um, I think afterwards can be physiologically affected. When my mother went into depression many years ago after my father died, um, I was very young, but it was uh, I believe it was explained at the time that the grief continued, the, the depression what continues. Was this? this would have been 1978, 79, mm -hmm. 80, going over the, through those years. And um, you start producing hormones and chemicals it, in your brain. Endorphins? I don't know for certain. They were just saying that she had now started producing some sort of hormone or chemical physiological that was keeping her locked in depression. We have so much going on up here. We talked about, but I said 200 billion cells. When I, I, I'm gonna say right out, flat out right now that in, uh, applying for help through social security disability, my, our mental issues. Mm -hmm. They are extremely biased against helping individuals with mental issues. If I were missing an arm or a leg, uh, that might be a little different. But, uh, so let's go back to the, the, the human brain being a computer, one which uh, computer scientists and, pro and computer programmers and such mm -hmm. stand in awe of because it's much more compl complex. And 200 billion, let me ask you this, have you ever worked with a computer that has never had a glitch, that has never screwed up in some way or other. No. No. So if our human minds are that much more complex and complicated and so many things put together, and uh, I'm saying this, I hope, for the benefit of viewers out there, for folks who can't understand, like someone who, like me who suffers from bipolar type two that has a heavy depression element to it, and it drains me of energy. And some people Sometimes might Sometimes where you're extremely tired, correct? Yes, excessively so, excessive fatigue. And um, I have to rest more than I want to. And I get angry because I want to be able to get up and I haven't been, like I used to teach scuba diving, I haven't been in about four years. It robs, and, and, and to come back to our original topic, Larry, I think a lot of perhaps latent uh, health uh, disabilities that I had cerebrally have been triggered more by this incident of taking care of my mother and going through the caregiver PTSD. And you take some medication for that. Well, I do take some medications actually, but uh, I You don't have to say what. I was not going to. <laughs> I will everybody say everybody in this world needs medication. Let's put Well, that. I think everybody in this world should think about meditation and then medication. If we can change the way we think, sometimes that changes the way that we feel. Pharmaceuticals that 
um, to piggyback from it, pharmaceuticals make a killing off of people. They think because you have, you, we're going to need another you, show if you get me going well, on. Well, yeah, that if one. you have a hangnail, oh, you need medication. <coughs> yeah. yeah, that's another that's another topic. But go ahead. I'll just say quickly how disgusting our healthcare system is when you're making profit off other people's misery and suffering. Mm -hmm. And just Ooh. put it there. Okay. And I'm sorry, you said back to Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Was your mother on medication for this? My uh, or a hospice um, or something? Yeah, they started to give more. I mean, she had diabetes as well, and that's why I think there may be a link between this and the Alzheimer's. And I think at first she was, um, to help with the sugar levels, was taking a medication. I believe it was called metformin. But in the end, for well over the last year of her life, I was having to give her insulin shots. And nobody day. else in your family would help? Um, they helped in different ways. Sometimes they helped just by financially, giving some money to help out if they couldn't give time. And uh, I, th I, um, I have two brothers. They have different lives than I do, different responsibilities, and different ways of coping with loss, dealing, none of us grieve the same no. or handle it the that same way. Takes yeah, different yeah, different. yeah. And I, I have, I'm sure at least one of those brothers that's raised in the, the macho world of men can't cry. Right. We live in a society where it's okay for, for males to get angry to deal with issues, but they must not cry. <laughs> And women, it's okay for them to be sad about issues, but they must not get it. Yeah, I remember growing up, my father, if I cried, my father said, oh, I'm gonna give you something to cry for. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so we were never able, yeah, go ahead. Um, something has to be done about this. Um, I have, I'm going to reach out myself again to Alzheimer's Association. So you want to give the number and the phone I, number? I can do that. Would you like me to do that? Can yes, I finish sir. what I was about to say? Go ahead. Sorry. I would like to make myself available as some sort of uh, spokesperson for having a pretty good education, being a pretty good communicator, I'd like to think. Nobody knows words. I know the best words. Well, so there's one guy I know who knows the best words better than I do, but we won't mention his name. But I'd like to be able to be out there as someone who's been through this, who can articulate and advocate for people who are going to be in this similar situation or those who are in it now. It's left to mm -hmm. a friend of mine <clears throat> was a nurse up in Alaska for a while, and she came back and I told her about having taken care of my mom, she'd already passed. Mm. And this woman said, you know, it's great what you did because she saw so many elderly people in the hospital there. Never a visitor, just forgotten. Wow. Just, Forgot, just, just yeah, or for some reason. I would, um, I'll tell you what, it took its toll on me, as I said, emotionally, physically. The, if I had it to do all over again, this was my mother, I would do it all over again. I would just try to do a better job than I did the first time. And now I'd be happy to give you your contact information. Um, first of all, I am not in any way, shape, or form an official representative of them, but I just want folks to know that this is out there as a resource source for them. There is an associ uh, uh, Alzheimer's Association of Vermont, and the website is www.alz.org backslash Vermont. All lowercase. I think they call that a backslash. Yeah, is there a number? www.alz.org mm -hmm. backslash Vermont. Entire word written out, all lowercase. And you can reach them at this phone number of 802-316-3839. Okay. okay. The number for... Uh, Pass me that. Sure. The, Got it. Ah, you're making the whole guy reach here. Sorry. <laughs> the we can number edit that out. Sorry. Later. The number for um, uh, the number on website for <coughs> Alzheimer's Vermont is www. 
www.alz.org backslash Vermont. Uh, V-E-R-M-O-N-T, the full word, or 802-316-3839. That number again is 802-316-3839. This puts an end to this edition. Uh, We would like to thank our sponsors, um, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and um, Champlain Community Services. Thank you, uh, Dr. Brett uh, (laughs) Campbell, for uh, PhD, for joining us. Um, I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Ron Seiler. See you next time for the next exciting edition of Able and On Air. Uh, Coming up in a couple of weeks, the University of Vermont has um, a graduate certificate in disability studies. We will find out more about that through the University of Vermont. And thank you for joining us on Abled and On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Ableton On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont.